You can't stop the rain. You can't stop the rain, no. When it starts to pour. When it starts to pour. If you guys haven't heard the news by now, our guy, Apollo Zoe, will be sidelined for the next six to eight weeks with a partially torn meniscus. According to reports, Lonzo Ball will undergo a procedure in California in the next 24 to 48 hours. With all that being said, we wish Lonzo Ball a speedy recovery, Godspeed, and we pray that you come back stronger, better than before. Go miss you, bro. May God guide the hands of the surgeon. My question today is, is Lonzo Ball a 3 and D or a 3 and bad knee? I'm going to say that again. Is Lonzo Ball a 3 and D or a 3 and bad knee? That is the question today. When you look at Lonzo Ball when he first initially came to the league, Lonzo Ball obviously had a quirk. He had a quirky jump shot. It was very unorthodox. But Lonzo Ball was a somewhat of a stereotypical point guard. If you look at the numbers and the figures that we're going to delve in today, Lonzo Ball didn't necessarily have the, uh, the highest usage rate, but Lonzo Ball had more of a multifaceted game compared to what he is today. Fans have been criticizing Lonzo Ball and, and his stint in New Orleans. You know, the media in New Orleans was scrutinizing Lonzo Ball because of his inability or his unwillingness to attack the paint. Now, I have been guilty as well. As a Lonzo Ball fan who wants to see Lonzo Ball to be one of the more premier and better NBA guards, players, etc. in the league, I often felt that Lonzo Ball needed a multifaceted, more complex, more non-pattern, or even unpredictable game. Because that's when the offense becomes more dynamic. That's when defenses have to plan, try to find ways to actually minimize the offense. It, the planning will therefore be difficult because there's not a pattern that Lonzo Ball uh, rely upon every game. But instead, Lonzo Ball, especially in his latter years, have become more perimeter oriented. So, and there's evidence, even when you think about the fact that, you know, when Lonzo Ball is attacking the rim, when he's drawing fouls, when he's shooting the mid-range, in addition to the three, Lonzo shoots about, you know, he scores about 19, 20 points per game. It's those games when Lonzo Ball, it's just, you know, it's, he's one for eight, and he gets a, a single-digit scoring outage. And a lot, a lot of fans call Lonzo Ball the triple single king, and it infuriates me. But as a loyal supporter and as a loyal fan, objectively, I mean, this man is, is at, at year five is scoring a single-digit outage. Now, nobody's impervious to a bad shooting night, but I've often said before, why not mix your game up? As a big fan of, my, of, of Michael Jordan, definitely a big fan of Kobe Bryant. Kobe has some horrible shooting nights. It's the reason why uh, uh, Kobe Bryant leads the league and miss attempts because he he has some horrible shooting nights. But he always would give you 20, 25 points because he knew how to get to the line. He would mix his game up and often would see my boy Lonzo Ball having a bad shooting night. But I'm going I'm to be reluctant to actually get into the paint. For that reason, I was always just frustrated. And, and I often said, is Lonzo Ball simply trying to conform to an archetype? 3 and D archetype? Is he trying to, you know, three-point shooters who play defense will get paid. I mean, these guys are a premium in the league. So I thought to myself, is Lonzo, you know, is he trying to conform to a, a particular uh Archetypes. He's trying to conform to a particular skill set or, or skill position that's not necessarily indicative of the point guard position. Because if you look at Lonzo Ball's uh, skill set, primarily in the half court, it's not atypical of a point guard to camp in the corner 
and a spot up for three point shots. But but I have to have a bit of confession. I keep hearing my the, in the back of my mind, could Lonzo be trying to preserve his career? Is Lonzo Ball dealing with a lingering injury that is not in the scouting report? Now, if you know about professional athletes, these guys deal with lingering issues all the time. I mean, there's just injuries that linger throughout the entire season that doesn't necessarily show up on the scouting report or isn't or even we are even privy to or even made public. So my thought process was in the back of my mind at the same time, as I contradicted my hypothesis, is Lonzo Ball trying to preserve his career? Is he dealing with an injury? Because, you know, if you know Lonzo Ball's history, and we're gonna delve into that in a little bit, you know, he's he's been rather injury prone. And I felt like in the back of my mind, maybe Lonzo is trying to preserve his body for the longevity of his career. And according to the news that came out, that could very well be the case. So my question again, is Lonzo Ball a three and D or three and bad knee? Apollo Zo had a very frustrating injury riddle rookie season. Zo only appeared in 52 of the 82 games. Apollo Zo dealt with a sprained shoulder injury and his rookie season ended prematurely when he tore his left meniscus. And in 2018, Zoe underwent a knee scope after having the procedure in July of 2018. Lonzo was able to return healthy for the start of training camp. Now guys, we have to examine the numbers. Now, Lonzo Ball drove to the basket 7.6 times, roughly eight times per game, the most of his entire career. Conversely, this season, Lonzo Ball's average of driving to the basket is at an all-time low. Hmm. Is that a coincidence? Let's delve further into the stats. Lonzo's sophomore year, he only had played in 47 games. I remember Lonzo Ball coming back with a bigger body, stronger, more athletic, and I thought this is prime Lonzo Ball. But unfortunately, Lonzo Ball suffered a grade three injury against the Houston Rockets. And at the time, Lonzo Ball was on par for a triple-double. Now, the grade three ankle injury would sideline Zo, unfortunately, for the remainder of the season. Now, guys, Lonzo only drove to the basket, according to NBA stats, five times. But we have to put this into perspective. This is the first year LeBron James became a Laker. And is this the first year that Lonzo Ball began to fit into the role as being a 3 and D or being a 3 and bad knee or being a 3 and I'm trying to preserve my career? Let's delve further into the stats. In 2020, Lonzo Ball appeared in 63 games, the most of his entire career. And also, there was somewhat of a slight uptick in his drive to the paint. Lonzo Ball drove about 5.8 times, roughly six times per game. Now, that 2021 season was pretty rough. From an injury perspective, Lonzo Ball dealt with a myriad of injuries. Zo dealt with knee tendinopathy. He dealt with a hip flexor injury. An abductor injury, which is pretty much a, a hip injury as well. He dealt with turf toe. And the stats also corroborate and support the fact that the matter is he only drove to the basket about five times, less than the previous year. And furthermore, his frequencies in which he attempted spot-up shots increased to 36%, which is five more uh, than the previous year. Not to mention, it's like 14 more than his rookie year. So his percentages of being a spot-up shooter has increased. Now we have to also put this in perspective. Stan Van Gundy had an offense that he called uh, Point Zion. Everything was ran through either him or Brandon Ingram. Uh, the offense were the monotonous is best because it's always featured uh, those two uh, dynamic scores. You got to give these guys credit and respect, which, you know, Lonzo Ball pretty much reluctant just being a spot-up shooter. 
Or could it just really coincide with the fact that Lonzo Ball was injury prone? Now, I'm trying to be careful with that aforementioned statement because I don't want to start the narrative that Lonzo actually is an injury prone player. I don't believe that at all. But what I'm trying to say is, is Lonzo Ball a 3 and D player because he's a 3 and D bad knee? It's a curious hypothesis and a theory. Maybe we have been all wrong about Lonzo Ball all along. This man's been dealing with lingering injuries that he didn't necessarily make public or we were also privy to. There are arguments that Lonzo Ball doesn't necessarily have the greatest handles uh, or even have the, the best uh, skill set for the half court. But we can look at other supporting data. Uh, I tried to examine usage rate. You know, Lonzo Ball doesn't necessarily have the highest usage rate. He didn't even have the highest usage rate his uh, rookie year. He's by, as a matter of fact, he's being used the same amount now as he was his rookie year. You know, the rookie year though was 16.9 percent. This year he's 17 percent. So there wasn't necessarily a good uh, gauge considering the fact that he was never historically a high usage rate player. But if you examine his game from the eye test, there's quite a difference in Lonzo Ball's game compared to his game as a rookie. Also, we have to also think about Lonzo Ball game his entire career. He's always relied upon a three-point shot. This was, this was always an integral part of his career. But Lonzo Ball was a whole lot more ball dominant in comparison to where he is now. And maybe, just maybe, we've been wrong the entire time. Lonzo Balls is not a 3 and D player. Just maybe, Zoe's been dealing with lingering issues and injuries that has therefore transformed his game into being more of a 3 and D player as a result of a damaged knee. And in fact, this is the case. We all owe Zoe an apology. Blessings to you, Zoe. We wish you a speedy recovery. And we pray your next chapter of your life and NBA career be your greatest chapter. This is your boy, Royal Perspective. If you like my content, hit subscribe, like. It does a lot for the YouTube algorithm. And the more likes we get, the more videos we will come. Peace. Be blessed.